So in this video, we are going to be adding the recommended user authentication system, which is going to be the familiar login with Google. This is one of the most commonly used sign-in systems. You've probably seen it in all of your favorite apps. You have a button which you click that takes you to a Google sign-in page where you select an existing Google account and then Google handles all of the security, password management, and everything for you. And then users are automatically logged into your app. This is actually why so many apps use something like Google Sign In. It removes some of the security hassle. It takes away some of the liability because basically what you're saying is Google, I want you to handle all of the username, email, password management, and security. We're going to let you log in our users using your existing Google infrastructure. And then you're just gonna send us the Google ID and confirm whether or not this user is who they say they are. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up Google Sign In for your apps. And if you don't already have a user's table, you can just tweak the prompt that I will include below to add a user's table to the Postgres database. So this is the project we'll continue working on. We have our homepage, we have a courses page, which is currently protected, which means that we only want logged in users to be able to access our courses. Now in the previous video, we set up this username and password system for logging in and signing up for new accounts. If you didn't follow that lesson, then that's actually all right because we don't even need this modal in our new system. We're just gonna have a button that says get started or sign in with Google. And that's gonna take us to Google's authentication login page. Don't worry, I will show you what that is now. Now, in order to enable Google sign in in your app, you're going to need a Google Cloud Console account. So just search for Google Cloud Console, click in, and if you're already logged into your Gmail or your Chrome account, then it will take you to this account. Otherwise, I may ask you to just create an account. And then what we need to do is head to API and services. Then what we need to do is head down to clients, get started. And now we're just gonna give it some information about this new app. And I'm gonna do REPL stack demo, user support email. If you want others to be able to log in to your app, then let's select external contact for this one. Let's do Gerard at repelstack.com. And I agree, continue create this project app. So now we need to create an OAuth client. The application type is web application. Again, we can just give it the same name, REPL stack demo. And this is where we need to get the URL for our project. So while you're testing this in the development environment, that URL is just going to be the replit staging domain. So I'm gonna add this URL here, head over to my testing, project, which is open in a new tab, copy the full URL and paste it into here. One thing to note, you have to remove the final slash at the end. And that is now added for the authorized JavaScript origins. Again, don't worry too much about these terms. If you're not fully understanding, just follow along with this setup. It's a one time setup for Google sign in, and then you will have Google login for your app. And then we need to add this authorized redirect URI. And this is just gonna be the same URL, except we're going to add auth Google callback for this redirect URI. Now, if you get stuck or confused, again, just send me a message at gerard at repelstack.com and I'm here to help. So once you've added that, we're gonna hit create. It's worth noting once you push to your production domain, so for example, instead of this staging domain, if I actually pushed it to repelstack.com, I would just need to add another URI with rebelstack.com forward slash auth forward slash Google forward slash callback. And that would also be added. You can have multiple, that's okay. Create. And this is the information that we are going to need when we are working with Replit Agent to set up our Google sign-in. So all of this has been leading up to getting these credentials we need our client ID and our client secret. 
Don't actually copy paste these into the Replit agent chat. Instead, copy paste the prompt that I've given you below and then Replit agent will ask you to input your secrets for each of these values to set up your Google login flow. So if you want, you can copy and save these somewhere safe, but actually from the Google Cloud Console dashboard, you'll be able to access these later as well. So we can see here, my client ID is here. If I click in, I can actually access my client ID and my client secret here. So no need to copy paste those immediately. So now that we have finally set up our Google Cloud Console accounts, we're ready to use our prompt and get Replit Agent to implement our Google sign-in system. Now again, please just copy paste the prompt below. I've slightly tweaked mine so that it changes my current implementation of the username and password setup. But basically we're going to tell Replit Agent to only allow users to log in with Google for the moment, just to keep things simple. And the desired flow is going to be user clicks button. It opens our Google OAuth screen. I'll show you that later. We're gonna create a new user if it doesn't exist in the database, or we're just gonna log in an existing user. And then we're gonna take our logged in users to our courses page. Very important, do not implement Replit Auth. Replit is trying to push Replit authentication. And as of right now, it's not really ready yet. There are still too many things that break and also the login and user experience is not the best. You need a Replit account and obviously most of the users of your apps probably don't really know what Replit is. So that's for now. Maybe by the time you watch this, that will be fixed. But right now we need to say, do not implement Replit Auth. I want a custom Google sign-in system using my Google Cloud ID and credentials directly. I've just given it the format for the callback URL that we've already put into Cloud Console. And then I just asked it to ask me for my secrets so that you can implement this system. So the only thing I didn't do right now is turn on extended thinking. You probably wanna do that. High power model is not really necessary for this setup, but you may wish to put on extended thinking. So perfect, first thing it's asked me for this Google client ID and my Google client secret. Now if you can't see which is which because the model is chopped off, just extend the length of this so you can see which secret is which. Head over to your Google Cloud Console, copy your client ID, paste it into this secret value, do the same for our client secret, and we're gonna paste that in here and hit continue. It's gonna ask you if you wanna add these to your account secrets. Typically I don't do this because you're gonna have separate IDs for each of your apps. So you can just leave that and Replit Agent is now going to start installing the necessary dependencies. If at this moment you see it installing Replit Auth, you may wish to just pause the agent and reiterate, do not implement Replit Auth, use my custom system. But because we were quite clear about that in our prompt, that shouldn't be a problem here. It's gonna be updating the table so that now we have a Google ID in our database table for users. And we're just gonna let it work through that for the next few minutes. Okay, so it has implemented the first round of this Google login system. We can see we have this new continue with Google button which is a good sign. In order to test this, remember, we need to open up a new tab. We cannot test it inside the Replit preview because it's not going to work, especially things like the Google OAuth screen. So actually, let me show you that. If I were to click this, I fully expect this to break. There you go, that's an error. So if you try it in the preview tab inside of Replit, it will break every single time because it's not going to support an external page like this. So you just need to hit new tab and we need to test our new login system from this new tab. So let's test it out. Hit continue with Google. And there we go, it's taken us to this login page where I can select one of my many Gmail accounts, choose our RepoStack account. You're gonna see this screen, don't worry. Once you add your actual domain, that's what you will see here. But it's basically just confirming with me, the new user, that we allow Google to use the email and name and profile, and all the user has to do is hit continue. That's very standard practice across all Google sign-in apps. So far, so good. And there we go, it's taken us to our courses page. However, I see that the name is not listed right now, and I'm gonna guess that this is because I was using a username system before, 
and it hasn't updated the courses page to now reference the user's name. So let's just check a couple of things when you are testing out your login flow. Obviously the first thing is did the login work or did your app crash or did it not take you to the right page? So let's just check if that user was added to the database. Refresh my database table and I can see a new user has been added. No username or password. That's to be expected since we're not using the username and password system anymore. What we are using is a Google ID. So that's a new column that's been added. An email. This is the email account that I selected from that Google OAuth screen. It has my full name. It even has my profile image, which we can use for the user's profile. Excellent. The new user has been added, which is exactly what we wanted. What I might just do is update this welcome back to have a little profile image and my user's name. So I'm going to ask Replit Agents to please update our courses page to... So it's going to switch from name to username. You can see it's using the profile image. So when I go to my courses page now, I see this welcome back to our Lipscomb with my profile picture here. So what just happened? We set up our Google console account. We went through that process so that we got a Google client ID and secret, which we could feed into Replit agent as secret environment variables. So what happens is the user clicks this continue with Google button. They select their Gmail account to log in with. If they've never signed up with us, a new user is added to our database table and our user will be logged in and taken to their courses page. And we can tell it's this user logged in based on this little message here. So our login system with Google is now working as expected. Test it out by going through the full flow. Common errors you may run into are incorrect callback URIs. So if you do come into that error, just ask agent, what is my actual callback URI? And make sure you include that in this authorized redirect URIs here in Google Cloud Console. Other common errors are things like redirects. Maybe you've added some protected routes. And so once you log in, you're immediately being kicked back out. So you're just going to have to work with Replit Agent to make sure that the sequence of flows is correct. Typically, if you explain the issue, Agent will be able to figure it out for you. Again, if you get stuck, just send me an email and I'm happy to help. And last thing that I will note on this is if you're implementing Google sign in, you need to make sure that you update your production redirect URIs after you deploy. So our app now has login with Google. In the next lesson, I'm going to be showing you how we can create some tiered paywalls and access for our users based on the plan that they're on. I'm going to show you how to paywall specific pages, specific features based on the user's plan.